some breaking news this morning on Benghazi as the Senate Intelligence Committee has just released a report they've been working on for quite some time. And in this report, it's about 85 pages long, we're just starting to get a look at it, it strongly criticizes the Obama administration's response to the terror attack that killed four Americans, including our ambassador, Christopher Stevens. So the bipartisan report is now saying that al-Qaeda has established a haven in Libya well before that tragic night uh, in the eastern part of the country. The claims directly contradict the narrative that came out of the White House on all of this. Joined now by somebody who's been on this story from the very beginning, Utah Republican Congressman Jason Chaffetz uh, has been looking for answers. He's on the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee. Uh, Congressman Chaffetz, good morning. Good to see you this good morning. morning. Mark. All right, so let's take a look at some of what is in here. We just heard from Catherine Herridge, who has started to kind of cull through uh, this information. And, and one of the things that she said is clearly news here is that there was a DIA report in July of 2012 uh, that Libya was that there was an establishment of, of a very strong presence in eastern Libya by Al Qaeda. I mean, you know, I think a lot of people, you know, had that that feeling, and there was evidence to that. But this clearly states it. Uh, no doubt, the, the security parameter was such that there were over 300 incidents of security attacks uh, there in Benghazi. Uh, Al Qaeda was flying flags over government buildings. There is video that you can pull up on YouTube of parades where there were clearly these uh, militias, some with uh, Al Qaeda ties to it. Uh, I'm glad they've come to this conclusion and, and put this out publicly with the Democrats involved in this and saying, no, clearly Al Qaeda had a very strong presence. They had the, the motive to be there. They had the physical. Uh, facilities there. They had the personnel there. Al Qaeda was clearly in a town that's not very big uh, in the town na named Benghazi. You know, when you look back at that and you think about the pleas that Ambassador Stevens made for uh, security, that he was becoming increasingly concerned about what was going on. I mean, the British embassy had been attacked and they had pulled their diplomat out. Uh, so as you point out, it was no secret that things were not going well. Uh, you know, I mean, why wouldn't you? It begs the question, why wouldn't you either pull out or provide more backup or have a plan? The military says they didn't even have an, an ability, a plan to get in there if they, if they were needed. April 6, 2012, our facility in Benghazi was bombed. June 6, 2012, our facility was bombed. They breached the wall. Five days later, the British ambassador had an assassination attempt. The Red Cross had a, a rocket attack. Um, all the Western flags had abandoned this except the United States of America. But Hillary Clinton, under her, under her watch, she wanted to expand the facility there in Benghazi, but they diminished the security presence. So we had less personnel. They didn't even get to keep the personnel that they had. And one of the key findings from this Senate report, I'm just reading the headlines as you are, is that this attack was preventable. It was. What they wanted to do in the State Department under Hillary Clinton was to quote unquote normalize as much as, as possible. And she testified that she said that the, the people on the ground made the security decisions. That was never the case. Eric Nordstrom, the, the regional security officer, was asking, pleading, begging for more resources, didn't get them. The ambassador wanted more resources and didn't get them. They, they diminished the security profile. They didn't fortify the physical facilities. That attack was preventable. That comes from a Democrats and the Republicans in the Senate. And that's what Hillary Clinton's got to live with. And we still have no, you know, no answers, no arrests. There's more in no. this report report on Ben Kumu, uh, this former Gitmo detainee who was released and is believed to be involved in all of this. So what's going on? We have this person at Gitmo and they release him. Now we've got him tied to the attack in Benghazi along with Mr. Katala and some other very nefarious characters. The, the, the media, U.S. media can go over and freely interview and talk to these people. We are well past a year and yet we have no arrests. We, nobody's been captured or killed. It took the FBI 21 days even to get to Benghazi to do this. Uh, it, it's just, this is why it's so important and why it matters. And it's so demeaning for the president and the spokesperson and others to try to label this as a quote unquote phony scandal. Yeah, it's tough. You know, you look at a lot of people fired up over a traffic jam uh, and yeah. you wonder where the answers are on this because we all clearly remember the president standing at that podium, very moved by the loss of American life and, and promising to those families that he 
he would find the people who had done this heinous act uh, to four Americans. And, and that, it just leaves a huge question mark in, in so many minds. Uh, Congressman Chaffetz, thank you very much. We'll Thanks, see you Michael. next time. Thank you. Okay. All that Thanks. stuff about James Rosen and Jennifer Griffin saying yeah. everybody knew it in real time yeah. when it was happening.